Um, for the 1940s, I actually have Josie's. And for 30s, I've got. Um, that's yours, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so he's going to have little groups. So I'm just going to randomly, depending on who, like right now I've got two 1930s people, so I might have you ladies go first. There they are. Okay, they're on. Hi. One second. Sorry. Oh, wait. We minimized you. One second. Good morning. Hi. Can you hear us? We were just talking through what we're going to do today. How are you? Do, you? do you want some? Hi, everybody. Do you want to take some more time to finish? Um, maybe we can talk it through as a group, Khaled. <clears throat> Sorry, I have the worst cold ever. Um, we had the worst weather ever this week. It was so cold on Monday that they closed school. And then, and Tuesday, and then on Thursday, we had six inches of snow. Wow. And, and all of us are grumpy and tired. Except for me. Except for Josie, who's not, for some reason. <laughs> I had really good morning coffee, so I'm oh, okay. Okay. Maybe we're going to have Josie manage this teleconference. Um, for you. We've had wonderful weather during the last yeah, couple of weeks. Yeah. Oh, good for you. It's 20 <laughs> centigrades here, which is... Great, Ken. It's almost about 70 or 70 Fahrenheit or something like that. Nice. That's very nice. We hate you. <laughs> Just 100 degrees between us, difference. Wow, that's great. Um, so what I was thinking we could do is, is this the whole group, or are you going to have little groups come in and out? Yeah, what, what will happen is, uh, in the other room, uh, there's about eight or ten girls working with Salwa. They're trying to catch up, okay? Okay. So they're still working, and Salwa's working with them individually. And uh, this is a group of uh, maybe seven or eight. And whoever finishes over there will come and join us. Just, you know, they'll sit in the back and listen. So whatever okay. you have to present, they, they have in front of them printed... Uh, handouts of the 60s, 30s, and 40s that you sent me. I have, you know, they're looking at them, and whatever you want to do, spend time on telling us, presenting, talking, you know, take your time and feel free to do it. And, uh, you know, at the end, whenever you, whenever you want, the girls will tell you which designs and which uh, textile or cloth did they choose. That's all. Okay, wonderful. So we have... We have, we have three presentations, and I have most of my presenters here. I think we'll have a few, <clears throat> a few people coming in late to join the groups. And we also have some pieces from our collections to show you that represent those different eras, too. Great. So you were, really <clears throat> you were really smart, and you printed off the um, presentations. I just downloaded them. But it occurred to me I should probably print them off for my kids, too. So I think what I'm going to do, unless you guys want to wing it. <laughs> Don't want to wing it. OK. You don't wing it. You should have done. But I am not the voice of proof. OK. I'm going to ask Josie to start and talk about clothing in the 1940s. And I'm going to ask you to end by showing a couple of pieces. What do we have from the 1940s? The suit and the blue dress. Josie's ready to go. So I'll, I'll I think we'll yeah, we'll let her. Yeah, Josie, Josie, we'll let her touch it because okay. we've got mm -hmm. So Josie is going to start. She's going to talk to you guys about clothes in the 1940s, and our textiles curator Linda is here, so she's going to help you um, help her tell you a little bit about some of the pieces in our collection. And then we have two other presentations. I'm going to go get copies of their presentations for them. And we can switch in the other groups if we want to then. One thing it looks like is that you guys also don't have your sketchbooks because I want you to show them your design. So I'm going to go grab this. I have them on the Great. <laughs> So Josie's going to rock out a 1940s presentation. She's going to look at some textiles pieces with you. And then she's going to show you her design. And she's going to do that all in about five or ten minutes. Can you do that? Uh -huh. OK. 
And then she's going to ask you a couple of questions about what you're working on, and then we'll bring in the next presentation. Does that sound OK? OK. Yeah. OK. Now you don't have to listen to my horrible voice anymore. Goodbye. Josie, I'm going to let you go. Talk about the 1940s. OK. Can you guys hear me well? Yeah. yeah. Yes. OK. The 19 oh, my name is Josie. I'm 17 years old. The, I did the period of the 1940s. And the biggest thing I can find that um, was what I'm looking for that influenced the fashion in the 1940s was World War II, which just about every uh, developed country on the planet was in that war. Um, so there was a whole lot of rationing. The styles were very slimmed, very tailored, rather like they were in the 1860s. Um, it was mostly. Let me think here. A lot of the expensive fabrics, such as silk, um, were needed for the war to make things like parachutes. So um, there's a lot of shortages as far as clothing went and fabrics. And also a lot of the chemical dyes went out, simply because chemicals were needed to make war materials. So a lot of clothing back then was homemade, because it was a lot easier to, uh, you could still make clothing that you couldn't get in the stores because it was illegal to sell them in the stores. Josie, can I stop you a minute to give them a quick uh, translation, please? OK? Sure. Just to make sure. I'm not 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 sure. i am um, as I was saying, the styles were very tailored and the colors were um, rather muted generally. And the, uh, the styles were rather short, kind of like what's popular today. But, as, um, but when girls would want to dress up, they had very, they were a lot more fabric, so the dresses were longer and more fitted um, in the bodice, and they were allowed. Like ruching on the sleeve, which is part of my, which is part of my zone, which I'll show you in a minute. But uh, um, bras and such were just coming in, so women still wore corsets, um, which I think about the most comfortable thing in the world. <laughs> but other people probably disagree with me. <laughs> no, we're fine. We're fine. They understood because you're talking slower now. They understand better now. Okay. Great. I have a habit of doing that, unfortunately, talking too fast. And with using your hands and showing everything, they're understanding everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, go on. Is there something on my face I should know about? No, no, it's just that they can't see you're far away. You know, the way that we see you, you're very far away. and. Some of the sound has some echo in it, you know, so sometimes some words they can't understand, and that's all. Would you like any move closer to the camera? It may be, please, if, if you can, if it's easy for you, yeah, that's the help. Can you see me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's big door. Um, of course, there's got to be a table noise. Of course, there's got to be a table noise. In the middle, Josie, please. Yeah, great. <laughs> That's fine. Hi, how are you going to see me? <laughs> okay, um, Linda, would you sure. mind? Thank you. Let me see this dress. Sure, that's one of the sheep dress. The sheep dress. This is a dress from the 1940s that, let's see. I'm going to just hold the hanger. Sure. I want to get. When the dresses would close, what was common in the 40s was it would either be zippered on the back or it had a zipper on the left side. Can they, can they ask questions while the Or it had a zipper on the left side, which is very common in the 40s. It was never on the right. So the can, that, can, can the girls stop you to ask something? Because they're asking. Yes. Hello, is that it? What's uh, the, uh, the, the five step? What type of fabric is it? 
It's rayon. It's rayon, but it's like a, a chiffon-y kind of fabric. Rayon would have been popular around the war period because other fabrics would have been restricted for war use. And so rayon had a very um, popular, uh, readily available, so it was used a lot in dresses in the 1940s. Rayon was dubbed artificial silk because it replaced silk, which it still is now. Mostly. And so it was manufactured to have the hand and feel of silk so that it could um, be used in the same way that silk was, when silk was a more expensive fabric. Okay. This would be a house dress, correct? Uh, I don't think it would be a house dress. I think it would be a dress for going out for work or for uh, clubs or day, uh, day clubs or wearing to church. Um, but the, the, I don't know if you can tell the little print on it is uh, little lambs. And uh, it makes it look like a very youthful sort of print. The other thing that's difficult to see, maybe I can do this and you can see it, a little sheer So it has a, um, a couple of fun elements to it. It also is heavy shoulder pads, which clothing in the 1940s had a uh, had that military feel where it's, um, Can you bring it down a bit, your hand, please? What? Yeah, yeah, bring it down, please. Just a bit. Oh, okay. There we go. Now we can see heavy shoulder pads. Okay, I was trying to showcase the length of it. This here would be a dress for a teenager like me, but this is how this is kind of epitomizes the silhouette of the era. And the skirt would fall about mid about knee length. About knee length. And that was the um, for a day, that was the norm for the length of the dresses. And it has the um, popular sleeve style. Where is it ruched? You know, like the film Pearl Harbor, they were wearing dresses like that, maybe? What did you say? We couldn't quite... Uh, it's fuzzy in our end, too. Um, you know, like uh, the film, the movie Pearl Harbor? Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor. I don't know that movie. Oh, I think we have it. Um, they did wear dresses like this. The same dresses like that. Yes, very much. They very did. much. Yes, if it's a period if it's a period movie, they would have worn dresses like that. Now, women would also wear suits like this, two-piece suits. Um, this tweed. Which is this tweed? It's a, a Tattersall check. Of course. A Tattersall check. I, I don't have all of the names of the patterns in my head, but I'm, I'm fairly competent. And again, you still see the, the heavy tailoring because... You have seams that shape the body. So that it's indented at the waist, seams here with darts, so that it's very close fitting to the body. Double pockets were popular, at least in suits. Um, very tailored lapels, still the heavy shoulder pads um, in the shoulders. The skirts were still, even though they were suits, they were still about knee length. Um, this here is a typical suit of the era. Um, it is buttoned in the front. Um, but so you were you were um, uh, using an, an economical use of fabrics. So cuffs were not um, wide. You had narrow cuffs. You had a narrow collar. You had a narrow and short skirt. Um, the the jackets would be close fitting so that you're not using a lot of fabric. The patterns are not large plaids, but they're small plaids so that they're easily matched. And you get a little bit of trim detail in the pockets to dress it up a bit without using a lot of fabric. So the whole idea was an economical use of fabric so that you had more materials for war use and restrictions on civilian use of fabrics. Yes. Dress, 
for this shooter. If it is homemade, if it is homemade, it's very well. It's homemade very well. well I, I and Josie doesn't know this because she can't see the label in it, but it was sold um, at a local department store here in St. Paul. Mm. Yeah. It was it was uh, commercially manufactured and sold at a local department store. But the label is hidden back here, so okay. Josie wouldn't know that. Uh, yeah. My access to the collection. Okay. Are there any questions that you have before I start asking questions about your presentation? Um, what, uh, do you want to, maybe there is a question? Do you want to ask anything or no? Not? No. Okay. Go the answer. You want to see some of the what they chose for the? Or, or do you want to go on with your presentation? So I just want to quickly introduce Julia. She hasn't had an opportunity, but she's been studying the 1940s too. So I don't know, Julia, if you have anything to add right now, or if you just want to say hi again. And um, <laughs> not really anything to add, but hi, everyone. <laughs> hi. And then we wanted to show you our sketches, the sketches that we're working on for our final looks. So I'm going to ask both Julia and Josie to show you those. And the assignment that we gave them was they had to use something that they learned about clothing history. They had to find something in um, the Palestinian textiles that we looked at to include in their design. And it also had to reflect who they were. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sure. OK. So I don't know who wants to go first. Maybe um, I'll, I'll, I'll go first. I'll, we'll have Josie go first, and then we'll have Julia go. Um, we're really excited to show you what we're working on. Okay. 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 I actually had two designs. One of them was the 1940s one that I was originally working with, which is a. You can actually. I can get it. That's fine. No, no, just a bit back. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's a bow gown in 1940s styling with the ruched sleeve that I fell in love with. Um, it had Palestinian embroidery on the bodice as a way to incorporate Palestine into it. And as you can see, it's very princess-ish, which is very me. <laughs> but on one thing that I brought over from the first time this design into the other one, although you can't really see it very well, is there's a line of flowers that I brought the bodice made in the Palestinian fabric that we that Aliyah brought for us from Palestine. Yeah. But then, last week, I completely changed it when I was uh, <laughs> when I was doing it on the dress form. And this here is actually what the dress is going to be. It's the same, still the same styling, um, with the ruching on the sleeves and shears. So it has the flowers going across the bodice. It's so it's very fitted. Um, it's blue with a two-tiered lace skirt. But then on the back. The um, the lace on the on the skirt spreads out into about a five foot train, or something that I personally fell in love with. Yeah, please. What's the color? What? What is the color of the main uh, fabric? Okay. Is that beige or something? Uh, the bodice is a dark green, and then the um the skirt is a blue skirt. Oh, um, is a pink lace over a blue skirt. Yeah. So that's what? something that I well epitomize is Minnesota because whenever I think of Minnesota, I think of green, I think of water, and I think of flowers. Ah, so that because we can't see the colors very well, you know, that's the problem. The bottom part, the skirt is which color? Sorry, Josie, can you say it again, please? The, the skirt is pink. It's pink. a light pink. Oh. Unfortunately, you can't see it very well. Um, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, that's better like this. When you hold it straight, it shows better the color. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. yeah. It's like a snow white dress. Yeah. No. What? It's like a snow, uh, snow white dress. Snow. It's, it's not a white dress, but. Yeah, uh, she said snow white. Like it looks like snow white. Oh, yes. That is kind of the thing. It's still the princessy thing that I like. Um, if I happen to go to Palestine, I'll be wearing this dress for you guys to see on the runway. <laughs> okay, it looks great. Okay, we're going to have Julia show you her design, too. 
Oh, yeah, Julia, if you want to introduce you. Okay. Bye, guys. <laughs> um, so I'm Julia. Um, so this is my design. I don't know how well you can see that. Um, but basically what I wanted to do was make a jacket out of um, wool. It's, it's so cold here. Um, and the 1940s had a lot of... Um, like um, broad sh shoulders, like the shoulders are really broad, um, and so I incorporated that. And then I, um, the fabric that Aaliyah brought back from Palestine, I'm using to make a scarf um, to wear on top of the jacket. So yeah, nice. nice. How you doing? Coincidentally, the fabric she's using for her scarf is the same fabric I'm using for the flowers on the dress. Okay. You see, two very different uses of the same. Okay. Uh, the same what, what, what color is the, the jacket? What color is the jacket? Julie? Um, the jacket is like um, uh, it's a weave, so it like it basically looks black, but it has white in it as well. Okay. <laughs> Did you guys want to show us the pieces that you're working on? Yeah. But anybody, yeah. you know, no. you'll have, to, yeah, they will, but you'll have to put, you know, they are the ninth graders, this group. Oh, they're okay. So they're a bit, fi finding it a bit difficult to express themselves, that's why. <laughs> so please be patient with us, Sammy. That's why. Oh, okay. You know, they'll try to show you something. Go on. Yeah, maybe yeah. that was easy. Who me? Who me? What <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Alea. I'm 14 years old. How do you, can you spell that? Sorry, Colin, do you mind spelling that? Alea. A L A. A L A? All right, thank you. A apostrophe like so. Yeah. Um, I want to make uh, like this a trousers and uh, like a t shirt. Okay. Like a sneaker, yeah. Can you bring in a little pointer? <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. Okay. Um, the kind of uh, our. The colors are um, of white and like a green. Okay. Um, and some of the Palestinian uh, old fashioned. Embroidery. Embroidery, yes. Embroidery. Yeah. On the jacket? On, uh, on the jacket, yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Anybody else wants to show? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Hara. Uh, I. Hmm? How do you spell your name? H A L A. Okay, great, thanks. It's it's a different letter, and yeah, it's not H. It is written H in English, but it's pronounced a bit different, ha, which is not existing in, it doesn't exist in English. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, you know, it's a new, relatively new name. Yeah. Anyway, go on. Yalla. Uh, I decided to make uh, this dress. <laughs> Pretty. <laughs> uh, the color is blue, like the sky. 
And I'm going to add some things. And it's going to be sublime. She's keeping it a secret what she's going to add. Oh. <laughs> she's <laughs> working with the blue. Yeah. Like this guy. Yeah. All right. Nice. Start, next week they will start with the, working with the fabrics. You know, we've got all the next week, the coming two weeks, we'll be working on two or three sessions a week. So they'll start doing their actual designs and, you know, they'll do some intensive work so to prepare for your coming, you know, to be finished before you come. For you. <laughs> Anybody else want to show anything? Or shall we go to another presentation or something from your side? Sure, we can do that. Yeah, okay. Who wants to go next? 30s or 60s? I'm going to have 30s going next. Okay. So we have another presentation. I don't know if you want to bring another group in or if we should just keep rocking going. Go ahead, and I'll see which, whether there are some girls who are free, they will change. Because these ones, they did a session on Thursday. You know, so they just came here to attend. The presentations. They have oh, that's great. Okay. So this is, um, I'm going to let Naya and Kate and Bella introduce themselves, and they're going to talk to you about clothes from the 1930s. So they're a little bit older than the clothes that Josie was showing you. I know you have a, their presentation right there. So um, we hope you enjoy it. And if you guys want to start by just saying who you are. I'm going to be on the front of the table. Notice that when I was like, please don't pick me, please don't pick me, please don't pick me. Hi. Hi. I'm Bella. Hi. 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 And some features included really fitted silhouettes, and the fabric was often bias cut, which means it was at an angle, which made it more flowy. And they wore a lot of hats and gloves. Um, there were some new types of fabrics used in this era, like rayon that they were talking about earlier. That was a new like innovation during the 30s because of the Depression. Um, uh, they just use different types of fabrics. They couldn't use the ones they used before, like silk. Can I just interrupt to translate a couple of things, please? We can work at the team. Can't hear recession. But the recession. This is the recession. I mean, the recession. The economy is very bad. I mean, I'm not talking about the economy. But it's been a very, 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 فأي شيء بيحكوه بيكون related to that period related to that atmosphere. Oh, okay. Go on. I'm sorry, but. Oh no, that's fine. Oh yeah. These girls are. I kind of sprung this on them, so they're kind of making it up as they go along a little bit. So we might be a little slow too. Take your time. Okay. Um, so the dresses in the 30s, they were like under the knee or mid calf, and they had really wide shoulders, kind of like the 40s, and but evening gowns, so more fancy dresses, they were all the way down to the floor. Um, and the dresses of the 30s were really feminine, um, and they they often had like ruffles and like butterfly sleeves, which are sleeves that kind of flutter on your arm a little bit. And so this was a lot different from the era before this, the 20s, because it was a lot more feminine. 
يعني بوز نوسي اكثر كانوا بالمايكل فيرد وكانوا العاديات لعند تحت النقطه شوي والدرس بالنايت درس لا تحت تحت اوكي for tops there were a lot of different popular neckline styles and a big trend was form fitting sweaters which was inspired by a hollywood movie called um just a sec um it was called sweater girl no, no they won't forget it was called they won't forget but the trend was called sweater girl and it was a really form fitting sweater it was the first really big fashion trend for teenagers yeah and to them because they have the handout maybe okay, it's like that's the the third to last page i think third to last yeah sweet girl you mean uh, sweater yeah sweater sweet more hollywood influence the page that says more hollywood influence which which page says the golden age of hollywood on the top ah uh, okay well there's two uh, okay. are you talking about the sweaters as well yeah like, Okay. okay. Let's see. Okay. There's quite a lot in that uh, handout, you know, quite a lot of information. So, you know, the girls have a look at it quickly, but now that you're talking about it, they're looking more closely. Okay. Um so pants were uh like a new trend but pants were like only socially accepted in the 30s and it was a thing in the 30s for women to wear pants so that was a big trend and like they they had a lot of women's pants styles that were coming out during the 30s they did wear pants in the 30s yeah yeah the first time the first time يعني pants يعني البنطلونات بدوا يتقبلوهم بالثيرتيز بس قبل ما كانوا اسمه قولي لا الثيرتيز يعني ثمانين سنة يعني. Okay. I would like to add a little tidbit if I may. Yes. Um, until the 40s when just about all women were wearing pants because they were working. Um, pants were were rather looked down upon by the older generations. So um, for outerwear, they often wore small jackets or blouses over their dresses and there were a lot of different styles one was called a clutch coat and it didn't have any fasteners so you had to hold it closed which was a very practical i guess but i don't know <laughs> <laughs> If you guys want to choose like one or two other highlights and then see if Bella has anything yeah. to add. <coughs> <coughs> okay. So during the 30s, um, this is the page that says accessories, I think. Sorry. This is the page that says accessories. Okay. 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 Um, if you were going outside or out of your house, you'd often wear hats and gloves, which were both really popular. There were lots of different styles. Um, some popular styles of hats were the pillbox hat, turbans, and the cloche hat, which was more of a style during the 20s, but it carried on during the early 30s too. Turbans? Did you say turbans? Yes. Can I see the picture? Okay. Okay. 
<laughs> okay, and we're kind of skipping around, so sorry about that. But can you go to the page that says the Great Depression? The Great Depression. Yeah. So um, this was a big influence on clothing in the 30s. Um, during the Great Depression, there wasn't a lot of money in the U.S. So women, sometimes to save money, they made dresses out of patterned chicken feet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and or they mended their old garments and wore them over again. It was just a lot of um, new things that popped up to save money. Okay. Thank you. Wait, hold on. Well, I also did the 30s with Maya, but she's not here right now. Um, I would just like to add in that these were the kinds of clothes that were in the 1930s for teens. This is for the girls. They would wear longer, darker skirts because it reflected the Great Depression. And they would wear these kind of sweaters, like this one. And um, in the 1930s, sports was also a big influence on women. They're, they weren't allowed really to wear long short skirts, but when it came to sports like figure skating, they were um, allowed to wear short skirts. And cup sizes for bras were also, um, I think they were made in the 1930s. Um, yeah. Look at yeah. some of the costumes. Yeah. What I brought from the historical Cincinnati collection is um, a skating costume for that a young girl wore, and I have the piece. Here's the sweater. Let me put it on the board. So in the photo, here's the sweater. So this would be a popular kind of sweater that would have been worn. In fact, I found a photograph of my mother wearing a similar sweater when she was in high school. Oh. Looks lovely. Uh, blue, blue and white sweater, and how would you describe the patterns on it? Isn't it like a Norwegian sweater? Yeah, it's like trees and those like eagles. Yeah. 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 Almost looks like it's an eagle, which would be uh, appropriate for a, an American girl to wear a sweater with an eagle on it, since that's our national symbol. Were, were all these fashions similar across the U.S., or were there areas that were different, you think? It would not have been very regional. Um, I think that because of national magazines and national movies um, available nationally, that many of the fashions would not have any regionalism. They would be national. Okay. This is the sweater dress that would have been worn by this young woman. Someone would have to do that. I'm not how to do that. And I did get it up a little better here. This is an example of a hand. This is a hand knit sweater. This one, this girl's grandmother knit this sweater so she could wear it for her skating performances. So it's a wool knit. It has a big circle of dirt with a yellow wool and angora trim to make it pretty. Yeah. Okay, the skating. Skating. Um, and this uh, this young woman uh, skated in national competitions, 
and she was from Minnesota. So we have her. Her name was Dorothy. Her name is Dorothy. And uh, it's knit of a very fine, uh, lightweight knit, and probably I'm a I'm a knitter myself. And I would never attempt something like this if I wanted it done in time for um, uh, to be made before someone outgrew it. It would have taken me a couple years to do this, but my <laughs> grandmother must have been very proficient. What are those speakers? <laughs> The other piece I brought in. Is, is also about sportswear from the period, and this is a uh, a jacket. It's a it's a, um, a swimwear cover up. So the print would have been available anywhere in the U.S., but it comes from Hawaii. So this would have been available before Hawaii became a state. Um, it would have been probably available in any retail situation. It is a lot like a dress from the period. It's full sleeve, kind of pleated into the arm side. It has seaming or shaping. It has a belt to hold it closed, but otherwise is open. It's made of a cotton print with bright colors, sort of block colors, like you can see. The Linda, please, did you say at the beginning it's a cover up for a swimsuit or something? For a swimsuit, and here's the swimsuit. Mayor. So it would have been a very uh, modest swimsuit, and here are the pants. They're more like shorts that um, that girls today would wear. And it has a a halter top, which would have been a very popular, again, popular in the movies, a halter top. So it's a two-piece swimsuit, not exactly a bikini, but a cotton swimsuit, and then a very modest cover-up to go with it. And that's also, for, which period? for which period was that popular? These is that are, this is from the 1930s. 30s, okay. Right. Anything else? It uh, has buttons decorating the front of it, so... A little bit of trim. It sort of has a sailor pant look to it that would have been also influenced late in the 30s, early 40s by the war and war uniforms. Did you get to show your designs? I don't have my sketchbook. I think I broke down, didn't I? You want to bring yours? I can just. Okay, sure. Did you, you guys go? Yeah. So we're just going to show you the designs that we're working on. And then um, we have one more presentation, and then we're good. Is that OK? Great. Yeah. All right. Do you want to go upstairs to us? Why don't you do that? So Kate, do you want to show me your design? OK. This <laughs> okay, hi. Um, my design is a really short dress that has kind of, I was kind of going for sleeves like I saw in Palestinian dresses. They're really long and you can tie them in the back. Um, and then I was going to do some embroidery on it that kind of looked like Palestinian embroidery. So, yeah. Sounds great. It wasn't very yeah, clear to us, yeah. but it sounds great. Oh. <laughs> you know what? I think, <coughs> sorry, I have to scan all the pictures and put them up on Facebook. I'm sorry I haven't done that yet. But I will put everyone's pictures up. 
the problem with light colors, you can't see them clearly. With the yeah. I know. We have... But we'll take your word for it, Kate. Yeah, when we get our new teleconference software, it's going to change everything. You guys are going to be amazed at what we can do. <laughs> we look forward to it, yeah. Um, hi, so it's in pencil, so I'm not really sure you can see it. Probably not. But, um, <laughs> I'll just describe it. So, yeah, yeah, show them the embroidery, though. They'll be able to see okay. it. So I did a dress that's kind of inspired by the 30s dresses, and it's got butterfly sleeves, and it's white with black flowers on it. And then it will have like a pink ruffle down the front. And I made, I drew a border that looks, I thought it looked a little bit like Palestinian embroidery. And then the edges have Minnesota lady slippers on them. So I thought that was kind of cool because it was like melding two cultures. And like that, kind of hard to see. Also, but we can see that. Lady yeah. slippers, a flower. It's a flower. So lady, lady slipper. slipper. And that would be difficult for you. Will yeah. you manage with that? Um, she's going to screen print it for me, so I don't actually oh. have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is Lucy. She's my mentor. She's really awesome. Oh, really? Hi. Hi. So we're going to screen print it, and then she's going to do some embroidery over the top of it to, to kind of give that embroidery. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sorry. Sorry. Oh. Okay, so we're going to screen print it and then embroider over the top of it to get the look without having to do all the work. Okay. Do you know what screen printing is? Yeah, yeah. You do? Okay. Yeah, I think uh, we're not going to do some. Selva was talking about it the other day, about something she's doing to do it the same way. So I, don't, I know a bit about it now. Good. Okay. So, yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Um, and I don't have my um, sketchbook right now, but I can just describe my outfit. I'm going to do a dress, and the, the bottom of the skirt is going to be more of a long skirt. And I have the color. It's this one. I don't know if you can tell. Um, it's going to be a flowy dress. And I'm going to have Palestinian embroidery on it, too, and my own culture embroidery, too. So could you say the last sentence again, please? I'm going to have some Palestinian embroidery and some Hmong embroidery on my outfit as well. Okay. He is from Hmong. He is from Vietnam. He is from the Facebook page. She has some address that she wore with, you know, in the, her own culture, which is very, very nice. And in a way, it, it, there is some similarity I noticed between, you know, uh, the, the designs that, you know, of, uh, the Hmong uh, dress that you, I think it is your f photograph on the on Facebook, isn't it? Yeah. The one, yeah. It, it, look, you know, there is some similarity with the Palestinian one, in a way. <laughs> you know, there's lots of coloring and little you know, embroidered pieces. So the mix would look nice, probably. Yes. So we have one more presentation. Are, are you guys ready? Yeah. Yeah. They're still away. <clears throat> All right. You don't have to actually, it might be easier for you if you sit kind of over here. And then we can turn the camera. Yeah, I can turn the camera. Oh. In 1960s, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> so we should brainstorm questions, things that we want to talk about for next time. Do that. Um, <clears throat> they showed us their design. Okay. So, all right. Um, hi, my name is Maya. Um, I'm Alex, and um, we um, researched the 1960s. Uh, so on the first page, 
it, we talk about fabrics, and there was a couple of new artificial fabrics that were introduced, like plastic and PVC, which was another kind of plastic material um, that gave clothes kind of a shiny look to them. And you also had a lot of um, knits in that decade. So you had knitted swimsuits, and um, you had the paper dresses, which were popular. Um, and then the 1960s were very colorful in terms of fabric. Um, there were lots of like bold patterns and bright colors paired together um, for like the mod fashion look. Earlier in the decade, there were a lot of pastels for the more like formal kind of. And then later in the decade, bright colors like reds and oranges became very popular. I'm Alex, and um, apparently um, there were some. That's what's the name of the box. Okay, yeah. Um, the pill box hats were um popular. Um, it was designed by Jackie Kennedy, who was the um, first first lady. They had a lot of poofy hair, so there was either no hats or the pillbox hats. Can, can I stop you a minute to tell them to tell them something about this thing? ولكن <تصفيق> طوائي خاصة لكل بقول تبعة جاكلين كينيدي هاي تبعة كذا يعني فهي كثير كثير مشهورة وإلها سطاي أوف هير أون لأنه يعني معروف في هذا الوقت أوكي كاريون صوري أوكي إن ذس إيرا وي أوسو هاد ذا شانيل سوتس ويتش ور فيري فورمال أند Older women used to usually wear them. Like the wealthier women, they would uh, buy the Chanel suits with the jacket um, and a knee-length skirt. Yeah. And you would often wear them with uh, pearls, like a pearl necklace. Um, and these were designed to be comfortable for women to wear, which was um, not necessarily a popular thing beforehand. Is making clothing comfortable, but or nice clothes comfortable. But this is uh, would this would this be sort of casual day daytime or afternoons or evening? This would be um, probably like a evening wear if you were going somewhere nice. Um, day. Yeah, or like during the day if you were to go shopping, you probably wear this. Or like out to eat. Yeah. Or out to a restaurant. Um, so in 1964, the um, space age fashion became popular because um, people were starting to go to space. So fashion designers wanted to um, like incorporate that like space into their clothing. Um, it was also by the show Star Trek, if you guys have heard of that. Can I, can I stop you a minute also to tell them about it, please? Yeah. Yeah. So what is this one of Space Age? Do you know if a person is on the air in the last six months? Armstrong. Neil Armstrong is on the air. I think it's the first time a person is on the air. It starts in the last six months. سواء بين أمريكا وبين روسيا دائما يطلعوا أبولو اثنين وأبولو أبولو اسم المركبة وأبولو 12 وأبولو 9 فبدأ يصير وبدأ يطلع برامج تلفزيونية كان في واحد اسمه ستار تريك كمان طلع منه واحد جديد كان يلبس واعي معينة وشيء هيك فبدأت تصير الفاشن مرتبطة بهالسبيس ايج عشان هيك بسموها سبيس ايج اوكي كاريون 
Um, so the space age fashion, um, the clothing were box shaped dresses, so there wasn't really a form, they just kind of hung. Um, trouser suits, moon boots in white or silver, um, plastic goggles, and cat suits. Where it's more like full body suits. <coughs> and then if you want to um, look at the page, I don't know if yours is stapled together, but the, after the Space Age fashion with uh, two models with like a shiny <laughs> and a shiny pants, that's like Space Age fashion. <laughs> Okay, we we good. Mid sixties. Okay, yeah. Um, <coughs> as the mid nineteen sixties, um, earlier mod fashion was really um brought in. It was um influenced by the um British and England, also France. But no, it was in Italy. And um, and the mini skirt came in in 1964, which was popular among um, the youth and the teenagers. Mini skirt. Um, yeah, very short skirts and um, velvet dresses, lace. Um, they um, wore a lot of fake eyelashes, shirt cuffs, pale lipstick, and tent dress. dresses. And and basically the mods um they were um very into like their modern age and like going in with the new and getting rid of the old stuff. You know You know, you know something I just want to add a personal remark. You know, mod fashion mob. I, I remember when I was in England in the late seventies uh, and early eighties, uh, mod music came out and mod fashion. It was called mod. You know, like, uh, I can't remember some of the bands, but I don't know, it's worth looking it up whether they, uh, there's something related to, to that era or not. Have you heard about it? You know, like the groups like the Human League and uh, things like that in the early 80s, late 90s, late 70s? <laughs> we call that New Wave. Because the, the, you call them new wave, but just before them there was something called mod, and they did resemble these fashions. You know the the, the dresses and things, the costumes that they wore. They resembled the, the fashions that you're describing here. Is there any resemblance to the name, or you haven't looked that up? He's Palestinian, but he. Yeah, mod fashion was influenced by like pop culture and stuff, like in Hollywood or New York or what was. Like famous people. Okay, so can is that uh, some of the girls would need to go because their parents are waiting. They've been waiting. Oh, that's fine. You know what? Why don't we just jump? Do you guys want to just walk? Can we show? We have a piece from the 1960s. So okay. we'll show that. <coughs> and one of the girls wants to show you what she has done as well. Oh, okay, great. Can we show you our? Do you want to show you us? Okay, great. While Linda's getting prepared, uh, yeah, Hi, Ben. Uh, uh, my name is Green. Uh, I am 15 years old. Uh, well, I have chosen uh, this, this jacket, but in a different color. Uh, and I draw it. Oh, very yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. 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 Uh, I I have uh, shoes to wear uh, white shirt and uh, with a green skirt and a dark blue jacket and uh, I think these colors uh, will be the colors of seasons as well. Okay. 
He's in this season. Oh, okay. Thank you. Well, Anine had this applies for us. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. Well, we have just one last collection piece to show. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. No, go ahead. Go on. Okay. Okay. You said surprise, so I thought. I don't know if you can see. I'm going to come right over your head, my dear. Okay. Um, this is a, a good example of what they were talking about from the 1960s, an introduction of the mini skirt. So you have a shiny fabric. It's made to look like ribbons sewn together. Um, it is shorter as a dress than the beach cover-up we saw from the 1930s. So the beach cover-up was um, uh, longer than uh, some of, than the, the dress that you would have been wore, we would have worn for either school or again day wear shopping. Uh, very short dress. In fact, many people look at it today when I bring it out and think it's a tunic to be worn over pants. But uh, it was a dress. One thing that's really common from schools in that time period, people remember having someone bring out a ruler and measure the distance from the bottom of the skirt to the knee. Sometimes you had to. I remember that uh, period. Uh, we used to do that as well. Uh, oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> Well, it looks like you need to, to go. I know it's the end of the day for you guys there. Is that Sorry. right? Sorry? It's the end of the day for you there. It looks like... Yeah. You know, the parents come and pick them up, uh, you know, because they've been out away, you know, from 7 o'clock in the morning. And now it's... Wow. Seven so that's 11 <laughs> hours for them. That's why. Uh, we're left with um, four. Well, we're just starting our day. I've I know. I know. But, um, I'm going to have this group post their designs to the Facebook group. And what I also hope is that via Facebook we can come up with some questions to talk about for next time. Um, so if you have things that you want to know about what we're working on, and we're going to brainstorm some questions for you so that our next cell conferences can be more of just a conversation. Does that sound OK? Yeah. Yeah, OK, yeah, okay great. Good. Okay. Well, it was uh, nice to see you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Okay, and thank you. Bye. Can we have a quick word, me and you, before? Uh, yeah, that's fine. You guys can go upstairs. That's, yeah, sure. I'm going to stick around. And yeah, just a word. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think it went well, despite. Hi, I did too. Sorry, wait. Uh, the girls enjoyed it, even though they don't know how to show it or express themselves. But uh, they were, you know, they were attentive all the time, which was uh, really good. You know, that was really good. Yeah. I think it's nice this thing. Now uh, I want to ask you about something, Alia. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Miss Dejani. Now we, on Monday, as I told you, we'll be selecting the girls. You know, announcing our selection. So uh, we would uh, hope to start immediately with the with the procedures to apply for visas and things like that. You know, this is uh, something. So I'm having a uh, meeting. I, oh, sorry, you go. No, I'm having a meeting. Uh, I'm having uh, Susan and uh, um, Rachel. Rachel, yeah, we had I had a dinner last uh, Wednesday. We had a roundtable dinner with some American big shot visitor. He came over to the to Jerusalem, and we, you know there was five or six of us, you know, Palestinians who met with him and uh, with some of the embassy consulate staff, and we spoke about that as well. So they'll be coming next week to discuss the you know travel arrangements and all this stuff for us and for you as well. I'll inform them about everything that we said. One thing that I want to consult with you, um, you know, Miss Dajani, uh, she wants to accompany us, Mrs. You know. Oh, uh, oh, I didn't know that. 
Yeah, she will pay for her own uh, trip. Like okay. you know, Gada, like Gada will come as well, and she will pay, you know, like last time. So we'll have Miss Dajani and Gada as uh, outsiders, you know. Uh, now, uh, her, uh, you know, I don't know whether she got in touch with you. Her, her nephew's wife. She's called Lina Dajani. She works in uh, the ones who live in Minneapolis, you know. Right. I know. I spoke with someone. Yeah, he's called Walid, probably the one that we spoke to. But his wife, she works something in uh, with Delta Airlines anyway. You know, she's, uh, half oh. Lebanese, she's half Lebanese, half Palestinian, and apparently she has organized before, you know, before a couple of years, some uh, Palestinian event, cultural event uh, at the Mall of America. Oh, really? Yeah, so what we are asking, uh, uh, you know, we're going to have to try to arrange for a community meeting when we come over, you know, before the event or whatever. Would you like to have, a, you know, like a five-minute thing of a Palestinian contribute participation or if we can arrange that? I did yes, not. absolutely. If you would like that, I will put you through with the emails and maybe you can talk yeah. about it. But I know that this is supposed to be the U.S. event, you know, the American event, and maybe you, do, you would not like to have any, you know, just, it's up to you, you know. You know what I mean? So Yeah, no, I think we should. I think that sounds great. Okay, so I will send an email to you and Lena.